Hey, well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Collision. Daniel here to talk about the latest Christmas film from Amazon Studios, Candy Cane Lane, starring Eddie Murphy. I've seen it, so let's talk about it. So whenever Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You starts ambushing your eardrums absolutely everywhere you go, you know that Christmas season is upon us, which means more Christmas movies. There's always uh, seems to be a, a platter of new ones every year. And Candy Cane Lane from Amazon Studios is one such movie, uh, a movie that sort of tells the story, uh, a family comedy uh, telling the story of a Christmas decoration competition that goes wrong and suddenly a family finds itself under the magical spell uh, of an evil elf. And unfortunately uh, for this movie, if Christmas films are like presents under the Christmas tree, then Candy Cane Lane is just a giant sized lump of coal. The film itself is very reminiscent of like other holiday films, uh, like Jingle All the Way from uh, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger comes to mind as sort of a comedy movie about a character that sort of has to overcome the rampant materialism that has overtaken Christmas in order to find that true Christmas spirit. Kind of the initial trailers for this movie did promise a very fun and kind of whimsical Hollywood adventure. And obviously Eddie Murphy, he's Eddie Murphy, so this film has that going in its favor uh, as well. Uh, so with sort of the always appealing Christmas backdrop, clever concept, a uh, very kind of charismatic, great lead actor. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out that plenty uh, can actually go wrong in this movie. So this is, I actually had a, one of my, my eight-year-old sons was homesick uh, from school one day, so I enlisted him to, um, to join to join dad uh, with a review and kind of watch this uh, movie because he he was intrigued by the trailers of this movie but we did not get very far because kind of this film's the opening dialogue of this film features a joke uh, about inflatable sex dolls which is sort of the first cue the first sign for me that maybe this wouldn't be the type of film that I was expecting from it i think despite being a pg film a rated film that is categorized as being for kids uh, on on Amazon. This is not a story that is uh, that is clearly aimed at children. In fact, it is it is kind of hard to tell who exactly this film is aimed at because there's frequent profanity and kind of vulgar adult humor sort of all throughout uh, this film. Uh, there's kind of the premise of this movie. There's, there's several characters that have been through the magical elf spell, been turned into these like miniature sort of por porcelain figurine uh, decorations. They're cute. Uh, they're fun. They're things that kids uh, should like, you would think. Uh, but then you have like one of these characters who's holding like a lit match and he sees like a, a, a picture of this evil elf uh, up on the wall and says things like, I'm going to burn her bleep fire stick up her bleep, uh, she's going to hell. And that same sort of diminutive character also watches like a husband and life, uh, wife lying in bed and suggestively uh, implies the desire for a threesome, uh, saying, I love both y'all, how strange is it about to get? Uh, so just sort of classic kids jokes all around. And kind of moments like that might imply that Candy Cane Lane is maybe just miscategorized as like a family film and it, it's actually trying to aim at being a bit more like an edgy uh, adult uh, comedy. But the thing is that it's really not that kind of film either because beyond sort of the swearing and the sexual innuendos and jokes and maybe a, the somewhat cynical uh, tone, this film is very much told in the mold of like a typical family friendly Christmas film. It's still a PG rated uh, movie. Like the villain, uh, sort of this evil elf named Pepper, is almost like cartoonishly uh, silly. And there are plenty of sort of sentimental, kind of sappy teaching moments and like family dynamics and stuff very much in line with like a, what you would expect this film to have been. And it's almost seemed to me as if there were just two drastically different visions uh, for this film. One, a very whimsical, family-friendly film. The other one, a more edgy, adult-oriented uh, comedy. And rather than the filmmakers like picking a lane between those, they just sort of decided to split the difference and kind of meet somewhere in the middle. And the result is a very sort of jarringly uh, conflicting mixed tone that just seems like it's unlikely to satisfy audiences kind of for either one of those types of films. And it's a shame too, because there, I do think there is a fun film buried somewhere beneath the surface of all sort of this, the needless uh, content. Candy Cane Lane is at its best when it's leaning more into the family friendly side of its identity. The movie does like elevate the importance of, of marriage and family and sort of the, you know, a healthy marriage ultimately serves as like 
um, the key to victory at the end of this film. The, kind of the, the, the lessons that the, the various family members learn are, are valuable, and there, there are some entertaining uh, scenes and heartfelt moments that, that I think do work uh, in the film. But it's almost like much like the characters in the film that need to kind of cut through all the, the garbage and the filth and like the materialistic side of Christmas to get to the core of the, of the season. I think family audiences will need to sort of look pretty deep beyond the surface, cutting through just the noise and, and hollow clutter and filth to find any sort of wholesome core at the center of this film. As far as content to consider, things going on on the surface of this film, there's a lot. Uh, language, uh, there's enough language in here to fill Santa's toy sack. At least by my count, I probably counted uh, about 30 different uh, profanities, including, uh, I think, 16 usages of, like, oh my god, and then a bunch of other uh, swears. There's also a kind of a repeated gag where a character is clearly dropping a, a, a big F-bomb, although it gets censored out by a, a choir that sings kind of fa-la-la-la-la every time they're about to say that. That happens several times uh, throughout this. There are also several other words words that are used like screwed or crapped uh, or just sort of substitute words like are you elfine kidding me or son of a blitzen or sort of words that are like stand in for swears uh, so as far as language goes plenty to go around violence right there's nothing as far as violence goes in this film but sexuality there's quite a bit here as well like i said there's a joke about a character sort of you know inflatable kind of sex doll joke uh referring to sort of his like inflatable decorations in his yard, but obviously innuendo uh, for that. And he, you know, probably declares that we're a family that blows. Uh, there's also several other just sort of innuendos that that may or may not have been intentional uh, sort of sexual things. There's a whole gag about one, one of these little porcelain dolls that's like flirting with the, the, the wife, the, the mom, sort of this married... Uh, woman in different ways and like where the husband or uh, Eddie Murphy says stay away she's my wife and the dollar responds you know for now and then the the, the thing about the, the threesome and just uh, kind of aggressive sexual kind of flirtation and sort of other innuendos like a character like that character with his match uh, which says hey don't just touch another man's stick which obviously he's referring to the match but the implications to that uh, are clear so definitely there's a lot of sexual jokes and gags scattered all throughout that maybe one other content area is just the way that this film approaches uh, kind of religion religion. Because at one scene, like, Eddie Murphy's character is explaining to the elf, trying to explain to this elf sort of the meaning of Christmas and, uh, you know, sort of about kindness and, and all this stuff before he kind of ends in, you know, unless you want to go the religious route, to which the elf responds, Jesus Christ, no, let me ring you up. Uh, very dismissive, very um, almost offensively uh, kind of against religion. There's another kind of in part of this uh, competition. There's sort of like a, a, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season house next to a happy Hanukkah house. And they sort of make jokes about, you know, the Christians mixed up with the, with the Hanukkah and how Jesus was a Jew. And they kind of continue that. Uh, continue that gag. And kind of later in the film, Eddie Murphy uh, kind of declares that they're going to have the best Christmas ever before adding, well, except for maybe the first one, because obviously that was a biggie. And it's just like they bring, they kind of bring religion up all throughout, but it just seems to be done in a kind of a dismissive, uh, kind of cynical tone. As far as themes, kind of things going on beneath the surface of this, kind of like, unlike the film itself, I do think there are some interesting uh, ideas and stuff that Christians can uh, kind of work through. Uh, and kind of the main one of that is that I think unintentionally probably, uh, but this film does have some parallels just to sort of the, um, you know, like the Bible and like the old covenant of the law compared to the new covenant of uh, of grace. Because Pepper or Peppermint is the kind of the villain in this, the, the evil elf. Kind of her backstory is that she was the, the elf in Santa's workshop that was in charge of the uh, kind of the naughty list, but she got fired because she just felt like Santa was being too lenient and she just wanted more people to be on the, the naughty list, had no grace. Uh, kind of one character um, explains of her of this elf, says her standards were impossible, one strike and you're out. Uh, she was punishing everyone on the naughty list and we're all on the naughty list. And while Kennedy King Rain kind of takes an unfavorable uh, view of Christianity, I think a lot of preachers can hear that and say, hey, that will preach, uh, that very much sort of... Um, can serve as a metaphor for, for sort of the law and then kind of Santa's character uh, at, who appears later in this film kind of demonstrates more just sort of the grace giving second chances to people even those that that don't necessarily um, deserve it so I do think there's some kind of interesting stuff and then obviously this like the meaning of Christmas and the film doesn't uh doesn't get all the way to like the religious meaning of Christmas, but I do think there is value in just cutting through, uh, kind of exposing this the hollowness of sort of the materialistic side of of Christmas. And this film, despite its faults, I do think does that does show just sort of how empty sort of the spectacle is, and sort of what really matters is, is family, is the people that we live with. So I do think there are um, there are some wholesome stuff that this film does try to communicate. 
So overall, I am not a fan of this movie. I think there's a, there's a character in this film that, that has a quote that summarized my experience, where at one point she says, no, this doesn't feel magical, it feels terrifying. And that is kind of where I land with this movie. Uh, I just don't know who this movie's for. I don't know who this movie's gonna please. Uh, I think this movie could have succeeded as a more wholesome, clean, family movie, but I think by kind of adding just a bunch of the junk, the profanity, uh, the sexual jokes to try and bring in sort of, you know, include an, an older audience, a more edgy audience, I just think this film is going to end up satisfying no one. And I think with, you know, we're in a time where we have so many other options uh, of Christmas films to watch, such as A Muppet Christmas Carol, uh, I think we're probably, uh, you're probably just best off leaving this movie on the naughty list and picking something else to watch with your family uh, this holiday season. But hey, let me know what you think. If you watched this movie, uh, if you felt similar to I did, maybe you enjoyed this movie. Uh, either way, uh, jump in the comments section. I'd just love to hear your thoughts, talk about this movie, or if you just have questions, I'd love to answer those as well. And if you haven't done so, encourage you guys, subscribe to the channel, become a collider. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff we do here movie reviews and uh, podcasts and just uh, other fun stuff. would love to have you be a part of that. Uh, but most of all, guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Have a great Christmas and continue to collide through the world for Christ.